Alan, hi again. Hello, Phil. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm a bit frustrated. I've been a bit busy this morning, running the kids all over the place and this, that, and the next <laughs> thing. So I was a minute late, and that's not like me. Kids, eh? Absolutely. Anyway, 100% LCFC. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, welcome again. And we've got, uh, it's been a cracking start for Leicester, I would say. Um, eight points out of the first four games. I think everybody um, at the start of the season. If, you, if you'd asked them what, how we're going to go on, the pure optimists would have said, yeah, we are where we are and, and because of the way that we've been, pl we've been playing. But um, I think it's absolutely fantastic, you know, to get a... I think the Bournemouth game was a wee bit of a tricky one. It could have been a banana skin, but uh, thanks to Jamie and uh, well done for getting the penalty. I don't particularly think it was a... A complete out and out penalty. Jamie, you, he left his trailing leg as he does, as he's done many times before. Brilliant, uh, very professional, and to come back with a point with Bournemouth and the kind on on their win, uh, four three against West Ham, um, the weekend before Phil, you know they're obviously up for it, very very ready for the game, but um, a great point for me and bring on Aston Villa. Just talking of the Jamie Vardy penalty, and I think it did, it was a penalty. Oh, it was a penalty, but, but, but Jamie <laughs> played for it. Yeah, he did. Jamie knew he was coming, and he leaves his right leg, and he says, come on then, come and yeah. tackle me, come and hit me here. And he does. There's a silly challenge by the fella. Yeah. But um, I tell you what, what about, what about the way he put it in the net? No finesse there, no, was there? As hard as you can. No sort of trying to throw the keeper a wobbly, you know, throw him in the eyes and get him to go the wrong way. Bang, get in. No, Jan Kermigan, thank God for that. Just sma Don't smack it as hard as you can. Don't his name again. <laughs> what a stupid idiot he was. <laughs> I'll never forgive him for that. Sorry about that. All no, the way down at Cardiff. No, I, was, none of that. I don't think I've ever been as gutted as coming back from that when he did that. But, you and many thousands. Uh, I know, it was awful. Anyway, so yeah, Vardy smashed it in. He left his leg. Would you have ever, were you ever taught to do things like that? Or is that, is that just part of the modern game now, to have, to have sort of played for a penalty? I mean, I, I know it's all part of being professional, but... You were never taught. No. I mean, it's not something that you actually teach. No. But um, I, I can remember on an occasion, Aston Villa, funnily enough, at home, um, my old friend, my school boyfriend, Ken McNaught, was centre-half, and I knew he, he, he milk turned <laughs> quicker than him, you know. Uh, I got a one-on-one, -on -one, I got a touch, I went over, and the referee gave a penalty. Not necessarily a penalty, but if you get touched in the penalty area, you have a split second to make up your mind. Do you continue trying to play to get after the ball? Is there an advantage to get the ball and keep playing? Or is it go for the penalty? And I went for the penalty. So. Yeah. Well, and, it, and we scored. It makes sense. I mean, it, Vardy had a later pay, penalty claim, you know, in the dying seconds. That which, was a more difficult which, one. Yes. I mean, he's going outside the, the, the box, travelling that way. But he certainly looked like he got clattered again there. But he'd lost control of the ball, I think. Yeah, but then we can see Kante as well on the edge of penalty area. Was that inside or outside the penalty area? Yeah, I, well, inside. that was it. The referee right in the spot, Johnny on the spot. But the Vardy one, it's strange, you know, you, to get a penalty for someone running away from goal. But it was... A, it was it was a, a foul, and it was inside the penalty area. I think the linesman on the opposite side, he was the one who was going to give the decision. If he was going to, but he never did. And, and Benny, Benny, go on, you say yeah. it. Ben Haloon, <laughs> Benny. He, he nearly gave one away, Michael, didn't he? Yeah. Just call him Balloon. Balloon, but... Um, Is that, would that be easier? Callum, he, was it Callum Wilson? Ben Haloon. Who nearly got... Uh, I didn't think that was a penalty towards the end. Not a but it was a rush. It Not was a, a bit chance. rash. No, no, he's, no he's, they both tried to step across one another. Yeah. And um, the big fella, Ben Alone, he's, he's stronger. And uh, Wilson, as you say, he's gone down, hopeful to get yeah, a penalty. Yeah, he's done the same as Vardy, I think, but it wasn't been, quite. He's made the right decision. I must say, though, I think Robert Huth was a wee bit lucky to stay on. Yeah, what, when he smashed the ball into his, uh, looked like his face. Well, they've had a sort of tussle and the arms are up and the elbows yeah, are up. Yeah, there's a bit and, of... And, and watching the Stoke City game, and, yeah. and what happened in there and, and the, the the sendings off there apart from Charlie Adams stamping on the guy um, totally unacceptable I thought Big Robert just lost it a wee bit and it was the, the second offence when he smashed the ball that's, that's, that's violent conduct and I think he was a wee bit lucky 
Alan, you, you now working for the FA, as I think most most fans know, which is great. So you what? can perhaps I know how that's why. You, you, <laughs> where did you get that from? Phil? Well, the fa- I just I didn't know if you started supporting England. <laughs> Listen, I Finally always come to your senses. I always support England when they play. Yeah, I know you I do. I always yeah, do. Know. I've got four children. They're all born in England. Yeah. So you know, just be careful, everybody. I like England to win, and I want Jamie. I think Jamie will start. Yes. I think he'll start either against. Do you think I hope so? It's at Wembley. I really hope it's at Wembley. And do you know what I'd love him to do? I'd love him to play up top on his own with maybe Rooney in behind him. Yeah, I... experience the Rooney to play little balls through for him. I, th- I think that would be ideal. There was some chitter-chatter that would Rooney play or would Vardy play. I don't think for a second it would be an either-or because I, I can't see Roy Hodgson not playing his England captain, Wayne Rooney. Obviously not. You know, he's, he's clearly going to play. Well, yeah, but, but we know everything there is to know about Wayne Rooney. Yeah. Um, he has to find out a wee bit more about Jamie in that environment. But to help him through, I think there'll be no better. I'm not the greatest fan of Wayne Rooney. Don't get me wrong. But no, um, He's undoubtedly got some skill, but he's oh, frustrating He's, he's a well. very, very good player. But I think he'll be the right foil for Jamie. You know, to, they might be working on it and training as we speak, you know. Yeah. When Wayne gets the ball, gets turned, right, Jamie, go. Give me an option, give me a run, and I'll feed you the ball. And I think, well, in my, in my opinion, I think that would be great for Jamie. I mean, some people thought perhaps Vardy was picked at the end of last season just because they were a bit depleted on players, but we saw Harry Kane no. the other week, and Vardy's, Vardy's continued that form from last season. He is, I think, the form striker of, of uh, the Premier League at the moment with goals yeah. and assists, the whole Stato type of thing. Yeah. Um, so I think he's got more of a shout at, at, at playing more of a part this time than he did last Absolutely. time. Absolutely, and and uh, although Harry Kane, he's a decent player, don't get me oh wrong. Oh yeah, he just looked, I think player. he was... But against us, with the England manager sat in the stand, all he did was walk between the two centre-backs, waiting and waiting and waiting and yeah, waiting. Yeah, there was, wasn't much energy there, was there? Nothing. No. There was nothing at all. And if, if you want to play for England, you have to pre- impress that guy up in the stand. Yeah. And he certainly never did, but Jamie did. And I, I honestly, geez, I, I hope he starts. I really do. It'd be great. It'd be fantastic to see oh, him uh, wonderful. to pop a goal in as well. Oh, He'd wonderful. love it, wouldn't it? That is, I mean, that is Roy of the Rovers. That's, there's a film in there if he does score for England, isn't there, really, from where he's come well, from we talk, at his age. Yeah, and uh, funnily enough, it, it, it ties in with the, with the coach and mentor role. You're looking for grassroots players, mm. youngsters, uh, and you're looking to work with the coaches that coach these youngsters. And the the... the, the what they're trying to achieve, the Football Association, is to get people from grassroots football through into the England team. Yeah. Now, Jamie Vardy is a fantastic example of that. At, what, 25, 26, doing nothing, Fleetwood, scored a fantastic goal. I don't know if you've seen it. It's change of pace, left footer, bang, top corner. You'd buy him just on that. Nigel Pearson has to take great credit for that and bringing the lad on. He's moved on a stage now. He's into the international team, 27 years old. I tell you what, if you'd asked him three or four years ago, he'd have laughed at you. Well, he would, I think. I think it was four or five years ago. He was playing for, I can't remember which team he was playing Stokes for, but playing Bridge, at Steels, and just up the road. And, and, and Halifax Town. There are a couple of teams there. And he was with Sheffield Wednesday, I think, as a youngster. He either got kicked out or... Uh, I was talking to a guy yesterday called Kevin Keane. I don't know if you remember him. No, brother. no, I don't remember. Sorry. He was at actually at Halifax with him, and they called him the Sledgehammer. The sledgehammer. That's Why did they, they call him Jamie that? Just because he was sledgehammer. Just because he was, he, he, like, he hammered everything. Did he? He yeah. went after everybody, after other players. He went after the ball. He slid, slid in. He just tried to hammer everybody. So he called him Sledge. I mean, you can see. You never knew that, did you? Wait, no. Well, new nickname for Exclusive. him. Exclusive. <laughs> I mean, the, the re- uh, one of the reasons fans take to people like Jamie Vardy is the same as why fans take to yourself, Alan, when you were playing, is because you can just see that there's a hundred and hun- there is a hundred percent going effort going on out there, and people if people see that from players, yeah, yeah. they'll they'll they'll, they'll forgive ex- they'll everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, 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 they'll ex- accept that. So it's it's fantastic to see players like Jamie get his chance. Just as it was fantastic to see you do so well, and I know you got your Scotland cap, didn't you? And uh, I did, yeah. You know, so very proud of that. Exactly. But Jamie's got one as well. I'm very proud of that too. Now, the reason I said you work for the FA, I'm going to bring it back to the Bournemouth game, is because okay. can you help explain the offside rule to me a little bit? No. In the fact that <laughs> Marez, to me, I know, I know it's easier to sit on slow mo and that, but right. after watching it again on match of the day on slow mo, he's onside. I think he's onside, and they're he's going onside. he's offside. I'm like, no, I but don't they, understand they it. It's stupid to say he's his bottom half is onside, his top half's offside. 
That's the biggest load of nonsense I yeah. think I've ever heard in my life. Either he's on or off. It is a difficult one to call for the linesman because the linesman's got yes, to, he's got fast. to sort of look at the ball and try and listen for the pass, listen to the, the contact, but also watch the last defender. And it is difficult. And he, but he got it wrong. And it does, it can actually, you get very angry because officials' decisions can cost you points and can cost you players getting dropped, managers getting sacked, all that kind of thing. It was a very close one, but I don't see how we're ever going to ever change it, Phil. I don't know. I think the old system was if you're, if you're between the byline and the last line of the defender and there's only the goalie there, you're offside, no matter where the ball is. If the ball gets knocked away to your right winger, you're still you're offside. Yeah. That is it. And that would make strikers get back onside quick, a, a lot quicker. But the offside rules is a bit of a shambles. Well, the interpretation of yeah, it is, I think, is a shambles. And uh, I, I, for the life of me, I, I don't think they're going to be able to change it. I mean, a couple of years ago, they changed it so that in that sort of situation, they'd give the uh, advantage to the striker which yeah. to encourage more goals. And yes. you sort of thought, well, I can see why they're doing that. Cause yeah, but they're not goals. doing it. No, they're not. They've changed. That's gone again, hasn't it? Yeah, so. it's, it's, it's another thing that they've, they've sort of come up with. But um, it is a difficult one to call. The referee yeah. depends on the linesman. But, but yeah, yeah, they say that errors and mistakes and misjudgment and that evens itself out over the season well oh, maybe yeah. it does got, but I wasn't grumbling I just didn't really quite understand why match of the day were calling it offside it looked, it looked pretty on it looked close but you know what I do, thought what do they know well match what do they, they know he, by the way Marez I thought he did a lovely little bit of skill just to sweep it round the keeper yeah and it, it would have been had it been on allowed onside I think it, they would have been talking all about that little bit of skill that he did just to scoop the ball round well, the thing, so. th there's another part to, to the, uh, Ma uh, Mares is that Max Grado went and clattered him early doors. Yeah. A right bad one. I mean, a, a naughty one. And I think it was premeditated. Yes. I think because Grado is a small, diminutive figure, as, as Mares is, he would get away with it. And he went and hammered him. And I think it hurt him. And I mm. think that was the reason for him coming off at, uh, at half time. I mean, in the Bournemouth game, the. One of the players, one of our new players, who's who's really impressing me is Kante. I I think he's, I, I just love the fact. Again, he's doing that sort of role where he's breaking the ball up, breaking the play up, picking the ball up. You know, making little tackles. He seems to be all over the place. I well, really, that's him. That, really that's his like game. his the yeah. style of him. Jamie's doing it front forward. He's doing yeah. it from the from the front. And then the midfield, Kante's doing it. He's like he's 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 all over the place. A bit like dog muck, <laughs> but. He is, he's all over the place. He's tackling, he's picking up, he's, he's running back with players, he's, he's knocking players over for the size of him, you know, and he's back defending as well. And I think he is, I think he's maybe not the most creative player, but certainly the type of player that you need in a battle, and there's going to be plenty of them. Yeah, so, I mean, in the end, I think probably a draw was the right result. I think it was a great result for us. Bournemouth will be looking at themselves thinking, oh, we should have won that. No, I don't think so. I think the second half we totally dominated it. We absolutely hammered you. We were a wee bit lucky not to get uh, an another couple of goals. But um, away from home, you'll always take a point. You hope for three. You try for three. But you, to come all the way up, you know, people have been down there all weekend. You know, Friday night and everything, having a great yes. time on, on the bevies <laughs> and everything. And to get a draw, great stuff. Get back in the bus. Have a sing song on the way home. Lovely. I mean, the Premier League so far, Alan, four games in, we've got this little international break now. There's been some funny results. It's hard to judge really where teams are, isn't there? Teams like Bournemouth. I mean, West Ham have, have won away at Arsenal, lost at home to Leicester and Bournemouth, and then won away don't at mention, Liverpool. Don't mention that to my kids. <laughs> yeah, They're bet, mental, but. honestly. Um, but no, you're right. Man, you and, and, and Hey, welcome to the top four, Swansea. <laughs> Nice to see you. Yeah. What's it like? What does it feel like? We've been there for a wee while now. <laughs> I mean, that's it. I mean, Man U are, I don't know, are they, are they in disarray or are they, are they just... I think it's due to the manager. Start, I it? honestly think it's due to the manager. They sold him Nandes yesterday. Spend, he's or? spending so much money. Hmm. But then when you listen to him after the game, I turn the blooming telly off. In fact, I turn the bloody telly off. It, honestly, he goes on about this, that and the next thing. We're not this and we're going to and we're not going to and we do this. And he talks gibberish. Learn first of all <laughs> to speak English. That's a bit, that's a bit much. Going yeah. to Scotsman, isn't yeah, it? I know, yeah. No, no, because I don't understand the man. I honestly don't understand him. He's got a, he's got a bag full of talent there, and I just wonder a wee bit. People have left, and they're, they're starting to say it's because of his training methods and stuff like that. 
He looks the type of manager that I could never play for. No, no, no never play for. Two, he's a dictator, I think. And I think that's getting through players that, that he picks in the team. I don't think they're fully behind him. No. I think even the ones that have paid an awful lot of money for, you know, they're not, they're not even doing the business. So. No. And I watched Rooney uh, against Swansea and uh, totally, totally out of touch. Incredibly out of touch with everything. He looked a lost soul. I mean, bring it, bring it back to Leicester, Alan. We obviously, we, Pearson went last summer. Yeah. I'm, I'm really enjoying, you know, Ranieri feels like a, a breath of fresh air in many ways. His, his attitude in his, in his press conference and, and things that comes out in the media. He, he seems to be putting both feet into life in Leicester and, and the team. And the, and the players seem like they've carried I, on the momentum from last season and, and playing for him and well, well, taking I think, him I think, on board yeah, the journey. I, I There's think, not I been think, a big upset. Yeah, I think Ranieri has... has He's definitely watched the videos and the games in the last part of the season. He's seen what we're capable of. And I think he's gone into the changing room and he said, do the same again. Keep the same going. I'm not going to change it. Yeah. There's 10 players plus Nagasaki. Um, <laughs> is that his name? <laughs> Okazaki. Okazaki, that's him. And uh, okay. <laughs> Karaoke. Listen, and he's, he's brought him in. But he's, he, again, then he's, he's de decided to change it at Bournemouth and left him out. So... The players are accepting him and accepting these decisions, and I think he's getting the right ones. And he's saying all the right things, Phil. Yeah, definitely. You know, he's that. saying, "I love Leicester. I want to." That's what we want to hear. We want to know that you love being here. And uh, the longer he stays, is going to determine where we finish in the league. So four games in, Alan. International break. Leicester are sat in the top four. I think we're third, aren't we? we? Are third, um, yes. On just on goal difference. Eight points. I mean, that's two points a game, which, you know, if you look at averages, and, and I still say the first thing we've got to do is hit that 38 sort of points to stay up. But the sooner we do that, the sooner then we can be pu pushing up in our minds on towards, I know you'd be saying, I think a the, European no, place. I think the mindset of all the players is we are good enough to beat any team in this premiership. Yeah. I think our squad now is remarkable. I mean... You look at the team that we put out against Berry, a team of internationals, a team of a couple of players that have, have captained their countries. Yeah. I mean, away at Berry, who would have thought that many, many years ago? We have it now. We have quality players. We have the depth that if players get suspended or get injured, that there are pay people as good, if not better, waiting on the bench to take their place. And that's fantastic. When we come up against your Arsenal's, your Chelsea's, uh, and people Manchester United like that, there'll be no fear, especially in these experienced players, because they've played at that level. They know what's required. Yeah. And, it, and it's an exciting time for me, uh, Phil. I was a wee bit dubious um, about what may happen when Nigel left. But now, the way that we're playing, the lads have just picked up the baton once again, and they're running with it, and running well. And I think if the fans can keep uh, the Fortress, I was going to oh. say Fortress Filbert Street, but those days gone, Fortress Filbert Whale, King Power Stadium. Yeah. That, I mean, everybody in the league is talking about the atmosphere at Leicester City being amazing. Absolutely. And, and that's, uh, that will only help the players. If we can keep lots of home victories, yeah. n even the odd draw. But it's essential, Phil, that, OK, things have gone well. Things, things have gone great for us now. Yeah. We're eight points, we're third in the league, fantastic. We've got to keep that. But there's going to be times where we need the supporters, where we need the crowd, where yeah. we're not great on the pitch, where we're struggling a bit. We don't need the crowd then to get on to players. We don't need them to sort of go, oh, you know, when a, a ball's given away or a missed time tackle or a shot at goal. They've got to stay behind us. I'm quite sure they will. Mm. But it's at that time when you need your 12th man, your so-called 12th yeah. man. Yeah. And he's been magnificent this season. That is where the supporters really, really, really come into their own. So far, they've been fantastic, and I've no way, no, no, never any doubt that they will be as they are, home and away. We're going to need them. Thanks, Alan. Next week we'll be joining up again, and we'll be looking forward to the Aston Villa match Bring and, on. and Stoke, where you start to feel there's more points. Yeah, and we'll look back at hopefully Jamie Vardy. Scoring his first England goal. Got the one all wrong, didn't I? At Bournemouth, I said 1-0 Vardy. Yeah. I was close. You were close. But yeah, Jamie Vardy, all eyes on Jamie. Um, this Saturday, they're away at San Marino. And Tuesday, they're at home. England are at home to Wembley. 
at home to Wembley. Home to Wembley. Home That'd to be Wembley. an easy one. And Wembley FC. As well. yeah. But no, they're at home to, to Switzerland. And I hope Jamie adds to his one cap. And do I hope he scores. Wow. I think all Leicester fans will be backing that. So, from myself and from Mr. Alan Young, it's goodbye. Cheerio. It's your city, your team. We're still Premier League. That's it.